Right now, they're about 38% of precincts reporting, and presidential candidate Mitt Romney is trailing by a smidgen. But over the weekend, he sat down one-on-one -on -one with Ben Swan. The pair talked about Romney's plan to cut spending and reduce the national debt. But is that plan sound? Ben has the reality check. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney says he has a plan to cut half a trillion dollars from the budget each year during his first term. That, coupled with spending cuts, would lead to a balanced budget, he says. Tonight, we're breaking down that plan. Now, Governor Romney says his plan balances the budget in three steps. Taking $500 billion per year out by the end of my first term, and there are three parts to do that. Number one, eliminate programs. Obamacare is the easiest to get rid of, from my standpoint, but there are many others. Uh, we have uh, 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 Davis-Bacon, for instance, which costs $10 billion a year. Let's eliminate that. Uh, uh, Planned Parenthood, we can eliminate the funding of that. Uh, PBS, Amtrak, there are a whole series of programs we should get rid of. So let's talk about those cuts. What the governor proposes is to get rid of all programs that he deems are not absolutely necessary. But when you get into the details of his plan, very little of it actually eliminates these programs. Rather, it cuts them deeply. He recommends deep reductions to the National Endowment of the Humanities and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, PBS. Romney wants to eliminate subsidies for Amtrak. That would save $1.6 billion a year. The only big ticket item, though, on the list of cuts is Obamacare, which he wants to repeal, and that would save $95 billion in 2016. Altogether, these cuts represent less than 3%, though, of federal spending in 2011, and less than 8% of the $1.3 trillion deficit. So what else would the governor do? Number two, we take programs that we have, send the dollars back to the states, allow them to grow at the rate of inflation, no more, that saves $100 billion a year. Step three, you take what's left of government, you skinny it down by reducing payroll by about 10% through attrition and by tying the, the compensation of government workers to the compensation in the private sector. That saves $47 billion a year. Those steps get us $500 billion lighter, get our spending at 20% of the GDP as opposed to the 25% of the GDP it is today, and we're now on track to have a balanced budget. Now notice that last phrase. Governor Romney says those cuts would get us on track to a balanced budget. But there is a bigger issue at play here than just cutting the budget. There's also the issue of our $16 trillion national debt. So what effect, if any, would the Romney plan have on that? Well, a study finds from the Nonpartisan Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget that the Romney plan would not bring down our debt. In fact, Romney's plan, on the whole, would actually increase the national debt by $2.6 trillion. Now that's because, while the Romney campaign says his plan will not add to the deficit, they have not offered any specifics as to how they would pay for newly proposed tax cuts. And without those offsets, the debt rises $2.6 trillion. So here's what you need to know. In fairness, the same study looked at plans by the other three Republican candidates, and it found this. The Gingrich plan would add $7 trillion to our national debt by 2021. The Santorum plan, it would add $5.4 trillion. In fact, the only plan that would actually reduce the national debt would be the plan proposed by Texas Congressman Ron Paul. His plan actually cuts the national debt by some $2.2 trillion. You know, it's interesting that at the end of the day, so few candidates are really talking about how to reduce our debt. It's up to you to decide if that's acceptable, if candidates' plan or the president's plan continue to add to our debt or are even deficit neutral. Because that plan won't fix a little thing called interest. And that is Reality Check.